on this fourth Sunday in Easter, which is which we celebrate as Good Shepherd Sunday, when we remember Jesus' words, I am the Good Shepherd, I lay down my life for the sheep today. Uh, please. Jesus commanded, love one another. We come to worship the God who is love, love one another. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants, now I call you my friends. We come to worship the God whose friends we are through Christ. Let us sing praise and friendship toward the human family, through Jesus Christ, amen, is number 304 in the red hymnal, number 304. The King of love, my shepherd, is whose goodness faileth never, I nothing will. and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransom soul he leadeth, and where the pastures grow with food celestial feed. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently lay voicing broad. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, but with thee, dear Lord, beside me, thy rod and staff my come, I cross before to God. Go through all the length of days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. And we'll use confession number two. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their sins. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. See upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God, promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, 
but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And to as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, as truly repent of our sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of no obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven according to his promise in the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And before I uh, continue with the scriptures, I want to uh, welcome a special guest. We, uh, uh, we, uh, our, our, our tiny congregation ha has an international reach, and so uh, I want to welcome uh, Patrick McKenna uh, to, this, uh, to this service of worship. Ca uh, Patrick is watching uh, from the country of Malawi in Africa. So we are, we are grateful to have Patrick uh, with us this morning. Our first scripture reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, the fourth chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled, assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man stand, is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved." Our psalm this morning uh, is Psalm 23, the, the, the familiar shepherd psalm. Uh, rather than read responsively, I would ask that we just all, all read, read the entire psalm together. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our next scripture reading is 
from 1 John, the third chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is, is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. And finally, our gospel is from John's gospel, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. <coughs> the hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Here end our scriptures for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. And our service will continue with, with hymn number 461 in the red hymnal, number 461. Like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures, feed us. For our use, thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, thine we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, Be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when they pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Hear thy children when they pray. Early let us seek thy favor. Early let us do thy will. 
Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. We come now to our time of prayer. Uh, please keep uh, Millie and the Nowak family in your prayers as they uh, mourn the passing of Millie's daughter, De Debbie Grocky. Uh, Debbie fought a long time, for, had a long fight against cancer, uh, fought very hard, and, and, and she was on our prayer list for some time. Um, she worked for 18 years at the Bridesburg Bank prior to its closing and was uh, Millie tells me that she was the last employee to leave. Um, again, please, please, uh, please keep uh, Debbie, uh, and please keep, uh, please, please keep the uh, Millie and the Nowak family in prayer as they uh, mourn uh, Debbie's passing. Uh, please, we've also had a number of other uh, prayer requests. Uh, please uh, keep uh, D Denise and Anthony Saletti uh, in prayer. Uh, Florence Rogers, uh, Gerald Herman, uh, Sarah, uh, the family of Elizabeth Ridgeway, a nine-year-old girl who, uh, who, who died recently, uh, the, the family of Robin Kahn, uh, please keep uh, Sandy, Rose, and Sophia, and Eric in prayer, uh, Dennis Rivera, Lisa Rice, uh, the family of Jack Wright. Uh, these, these are some of the... Uh, Announce, these are some of the prayer requests that I've received in the in the uh, past uh, past two weeks. Um, uh, uh, Isaac, uh, I have a prayer request. Uh, Betty in uh, Iowa. Betty in Iowa. Betty. Bet Betty. Yeah, Betty. Uh, she's still listening. She she has been hospitalized. Hmm. Oh my. And uh, she added oxygen in her nose. Okay, oxygen. Uh, after none of oxygen in there. She so must speak. And Betty is my daughter's mother. My daughter named Laverne. Hmm. Laverne's mother. Laverne's mother. Okay. So uh, I'm asking the church to pray for her. And, and she's, in, she's in Liberia? No. Uh, she's here. She's in Iowa. Oh, Iowa. Iowa. I'm sorry. Iowa. Iowa. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Don't always hear so well. Okay, so Be Betty is in Iowa, and so we 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 will pray we will pray for for Betty for uh, for Laverne's mother. Yes, we will pray. Thank you. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks that you are the faith, that you sent Jesus to be the faithful shepherd of the flock, that you sent Jesus to, to tend us, to feed us, to defend us. We thank you that you sent Jesus to lay down his life for us. And we thank you that he took it up, one, that having laid down his life for us, he took it up once again. We pray that you would be with those who have departed this life. We pray that you would be with, with, with Debbie Grocky. Eternal rest grant her, O Lord, and light perpetual shine upon her. Be with Millie, uh, be, with, be with the Nowak family, be with uh, her former colleagues at the bank, be with all whose lives were blessed uh, by Debbie's life. We pray for those who are struggling with illness of body or mind. We pray for Betty in Iowa, that she may recover. We pray that you would guide the doctors and nurses working for her healing. Uh, we pray that you would lay your hand on her, for you are a great physician. So please lay your hand of healing on Betty. Uh, please be with her daughter, Laverne, and please be with her entire family um, as, they, as they pray for her healing and restoration. Uh, 
We pray for, uh, for Denise and Anthony Saletti, for Florence Rogers, for Gerald Herman, for Sarah, for the family, families of Elizabeth Ridgeway and Robin Kahn, for Sandy, Rose, and Sophia, for Eric, for Dennis Rivera, for Lisa Rice, for the family of Jack Wright, and for many others, uh, both those on our prayer list and those uh, who, who we know uh, are in need of your healing hand. Uh, we pray that, you, that all of these, that you would meet them at their point of need, that you would guide those who are working for their healing, and that you would grant them your, your own healing touch. We pray for those who are in time of transition. We pray for the homeless, those of our congregation and those of our city, that you would provide for them and protect them and be their shepherd. We pray for the veterans that you would heal the wounds of war in their lives. We pray for Dee and her family, provide for them and protect them. We pray for Isaac and his family, provide for them and protect them. We pray for our sisters Millie and Dorothy and Nancy. We pray for safety for Holly and her, and her children. And now, Lord, we lift up those prayers, not named on our lips, but known to you in our hearts. May we pray in silence. Lord, we pray your guidance over those in authority, over our country, our commonwealth, and our city. And we pray for peace in this city of Philadelphia, this neighborhood of Bridesburg. We pray for all the churches in Bridesburg, especially those of the Bridesburg Council, as we seek to share your love and meet the needs of your people. Most especially, Lord, do we pray for this congregation, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Sustain us, encourage us, enable us to be a sign of your presence. May all that we say and do be to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And I would ask everyone to please join in saying what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come, the judge, the quick, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we, come to, we come to our announcements. I want to thank Sean and Carol for their uh, monthly outreach to the homeless, which took place yesterday morning. Uh, many thanks to them. Um, and if you would like, any who would like to uh, help with future outreaches, uh, please, co please contact Sean, uh, Sean or Carol. Um, also, uh, want to, uh, a, a reminder that, uh, a reminder of giving options, either uh, by check or by the, on, by the online uh, giving link. Um, with that, let us continue with our next hymn, number 247 in the Black Hymnal, 247 in the Black Hymnal. My shepherd is the living God, I there for nothing need. In pastures fair, near pleasant streams, you settle. Take your ways and 
and lead me for your mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. When I walk through the shades of death, your presence is my stay. A word of your supporting breath drives all my fears away. Your of all my foes does still my table spread my cup with blessings overflows your oil anoints my head the sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. Oh, may your house be my abode and all my work. settled rest while others come and go. No more a stranger or a guest but like a child at home. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Easter Sunday has come and gone, but we are still in the liturgical season of Easter and will be until near the end of May. On Easter Sunday and the two Sundays that follow, we read of post-resurrection appearances of Jesus uh, to Mary at the tomb, to the disciples in the upper room with a reprise the next week for Thomas, who was away the first time, to the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, and in, so, in, in some years we read of the appearance of Jesus to Peter and several other disciples while they were fishing. On the fourth Sunday in Easter, the focus shifts to the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, and so Accordingly, today is called Good Shepherd Sunday, and we, of course, we have the beautiful, uh, we have the beautiful Good Good Shepherd window. Uh, it was uh, dedicated in loving member, memory of uh, former pastor, the Reverend J. B. Forster. Uh, he was pastor here from 1883 to to 1917. Uh, he was, I believe, our longest serving pastor. And, 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 uh, and um, an amazing shepherd for this congregation. Next Sunday, we'll read of Jesus calling himself the true vine. In coming Sundays, we'll read of Jesus commanding the disciples to love one another and praying that they would all be one as Jesus and the Father are one. The season of Easter ends with the Ascension and, and with Pentecost when we give thanks for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Today's reading is part of a longer conversation between Jesus and the Pharisees, uh, which, which take up the, about the first half of the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. And Jesus, Jesus is trying to get
get something through to the Pharisees who are not, not quite getting what Jesus is trying to tell them. And so Jesus is shifting from, from one metaphor to another. Uh, he first compares himself to the gatekeeper who allows the shepherd into the sheepfold while keeping out thieves and predators. Then he compares himself to the gate itself, and then he compares himself to the good shepherd, which we read today. He contrasts himself as shepherd to the hired hand who cuts and runs at the first sign of trouble and to thieves and wolves who come only to kill and destroy. It is the calling of the shepherd to provide for the sheep and to protect them from harm, to set the boundaries of, to decide who and what are allowed among the flock and who and what are not. It's the calling of the sheep to recognize the shepherd's voice and to follow him. In these difficult days, it seems that our society is crying out for shepherds, crying out for someone to care for and heal all the pain that we have experienced this past difficult year. It has been a traumatic year, and there's great need for healing. As a society, I think we're all dealing with a kind of collective post-traumatic stress disorder. I know I, for myself, I have not been, you know, I have not been I'm not at my best now. I haven't been at my best for quite some time. Um, hope to know what that looks like someday, but today is not that day. Uh, and I, I think we're all struggling. And as, a, as goes a saying I sometimes see on Facebook, it, it, under these circumstances, it, it's okay not to be okay. Uh, we're, we're, you know, this, this has been a really difficult year. At the same time, while we hear many voices calling out for followers, few indeed seem to be a shepherd's voice. Some voices seek to dominate, others to defraud. Others, such as the self-proclaimed prophets of the dangerous QAnon cult, lead their followers off cliffs to their destruction. Few indeed are motivated by true care for others. Jesus said that as the good shepherd, he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. In Jesus' day, to be a shepherd was a difficult, lonely calling which brought long hours and low status in society. And in our day, so much in our society seems to celebrate violence and death. Our, our, our movies and our video games glorify soldiers, not shepherds. When, when's the last time you saw a, a video game about shepherds? When's the last time you saw a TV show about shepherds, a movie? No. <laughs> uh, see, that, uh, sh shepherds aren't on our radar, but we need them. We need them. There's so little celebration of those who shelter and feed, who nurture and heal. Probably the closest I can think of are, are the, the celebrations of the, of the health care workers who have brought us through this, uh, through the, the, this very dangerous year, uh, through, this very di through this very difficult year. Um, but there, but there, there is so little celebration of, of those who shelter and feed, nurture and heal. Whose are the voices in our midst calling us toward that which is life-giving. Of course, as, as I was reading today's gospel, the Derek Chauvin trial concluded in a verdict of guilty on all counts. That verdict came after a long summer, indeed a long year, of peaceful demonstrations, not peaceful riots, less than peaceful riots, not at all peaceful riots, and property damage, all playing out under the shadow of a de deadly pandemic. There's a range of emotion, a sense of justice that a jury held Chauvin accountable for his actions, perhaps a vindication for George Floyd's family and community that his life mattered, perhaps a sense of relief that the verdict did not launch another round of riots and property damage, and among some, a sense of shock and dismay that, he was not, that Chauvin was not acquitted as his colleagues have been under similar circumstances. Of course, this is not the end of the story. A judge still has to pronounce sentence and there'll be appeals. And in recent days, including the day of the verdict, there, there have been yet more Americans gunned down by police officers under questionable circumstances. A reminder that the Chauvin verdict was a brief moment of accountability, maybe a milestone, but far from the end of any movement toward justice. As all of this played out, I couldn't help wondering what if police officers were trained to see themselves more as shepherds and less as soldiers? 
It could be said that the used military gear that's found its way to so many police departments inevitably seems to skew their activities in a quasi-military direction. But behind much of the debate over the role of police is a growing recognition that police are sent into all manner of situations, crimes in progress, mental health crises, domestic disputes, welfare checks, traffic violations, and that police by their training are better at responding to some of these situations than others. Uh, There have been a number of tragedies uh, when uh, when police have gone, have been sent into mental health crises, for example. Uh, Many of these have ended badly. We need ways to resolve and end mental health crises without ending the lives of those experiencing them. In many situations to which police are called, we need shepherds, not would-be soldiers. Jesus said that as the good shepherd, he came that we might have life and life abundantly. Jesus also said that other sheep belong to him, which he would call to join his one flock. In context, this was almost certainly a reference to the Gentiles who would join, who would flock to join the early Christian movement, which had begun as a movement within Judaism. But the story of the church is a movement toward inclusion. The key is that it is the shepherd, not the sheep, who get to decide who's part of the flock, because the sheep get confused sometimes. Often black and brown people, often immigrant people, uh, have been seen as predators on the community instead of members of the community. Hirelings have been granted a level of respect that should go only to shepherds. And camouflaged by wealth, sometimes by white skin, predators have been left to plunder at will. That is to say, we've often seen the wrong people entrusted with power with predictable results. I'd like to ask each of us a question. Who have been the shepherds in your life? Who has been a shepherd in your life? Perhaps your parents, perhaps a beloved pastor or youth group leader. I, I, you know, I, can, I, I, I can look back at a, a youth group leader when I was in high school that, you know, prob- that probably, sa- that probably, probably uh, had at least a partial hand in saving my life. I know for many of our longtime members, uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend, Stein, uh, Reverend Steinberg was uh, was, who served here in the, in the late 30s and, and 40s was, uh, was beloved by, by, by many of our longtime members. He, uh, Reverend, Reverend uh, Victor Steinberg was, was one of our shepherds uh, in, uh, during that period. So who are, the, who, who are your shepherds? Perhaps a parent, uh, perhaps, a, perhaps a pastor, perhaps, a, perhaps an ins- inspiring teacher. Uh, perhaps there was a teacher in, high, in grade school or high school that saw something that the other teachers didn't, that, who encouraged you to, to follow some talent or some gift. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for those who have been the Good Shepherds in your life. And at the same time, consider who might see you as a Good Shepherd, as a reliable, sustaining presence in their lives. Give thanks to God for those who have been your shepherds, and also give thanks to God if you are able to be a reliable, sustaining presence, a good shepherd to others. And give thanks to Jesus, the good shepherd, who came, down to, who came to lay down his life for the sheep, for you, for me. Among all the voices clamoring for our attention, listen to the voice of the good shepherd. Listen to those who sustain and encourage Listen to those whose words and actions are life-giving, who are carrying on the work of Jesus in our day. Listen and follow. Listen and give thanks. Amen. Please join me in praying in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth from this virtual place of worship. Go forth from the spiritual sanctuary. Go forth from your homes. Go forth into the coming week to love and serve the Lord. Go forth from this place, the spiritual sanctuary. Go forth from your homes. Go forth into the coming week in peace to love and serve all to whom God has called us in service. Go forth following Jesus, the good shepherd. Go forth listening to the voice of Jesus, the good shepherd. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and go with you, each one, now and evermore. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our final hymn is number 446 in the Black Hymnal, number 446. Jesus still lead on till our rest be won. And although the way be cheerless, we will follow calm and fearless. Guide us by your hand to the promised land. If the way be drear, if the woe be near, let not faithless fears overtake us, let not faith and hope forsake us, for through many a woe to our home we go. When we seek relief from a long felt grief, when temptations come alluring, make us patient and enduring. Show us that bright shore where we weep no more. Jesus, still lead on till our rest be won. Heavenly lead us, still direct us, still support, console, protect us, guide us by your hand to the promised land.